I'd like to speak today on the simple subject of launching out. Launching out. I don't know if I've ever done so much research on studying a word in English like I've done with this word. All right? I, I went to the Webster. I went to the Cambridge English Bible, all right, from England. I, I went through them, the old English, the new English, the mid English. I didn't check in the English from Nigeria. Hallelujah. <laughs> what launching me? Ashako Ramandaya Lavada. Even the Jamaican English, I check it too. And the Canadian too, eh? I check that one. <coughs> so this is the French speaking word about to talk to you about a word in English. Launching out. Somebody say that with me. Launching say it again. Do you see this missile that is popping out? It's being launched. It's going somewhere. It's not a test missile. It's a hitting missile. It has to hit its target. Somebody say launching out. Launching out. So now let me give you a definition of launching out. I didn't take the whole thing. I just pick a few. Amen? I, I believe this morning is a prophetic service because sometimes when you sit in the confine of the anointing and the presence of God and the word of God, things happen when your spirit captured them by faith. Do you understand? There is things that begin to happen when your spirit, I say your spirit, I didn't say your mind. Because your mind will analyze it, your mind will put it in process. But your spirit grab it because it sees the end from the beginning. So it's very important that you understand me. I want you to open your mind, your heart, your spirit. Because that's where miracles occur. When you receive a word in the atmosphere that is charged with God, miracles begin to happen. People begin to recover. Idea begin to become clear. Vision begin to be clear. Are you hearing me? And then you have not gone yet to the school, but yet, just because you're sitting in the atmosphere where the word of God is preached and the revelation of God is there, that anointing empower you to actually change dimension and change location and change places and be catapulted or launched out. So I'm here today to launch out somebody. Uh, did you hear what I said? I'm about to change where you are to send you somewhere else. I'm about to move you by the word of God, by the anointing of God. Somebody is about to change location today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's the part of the word of God. So just heed and listen and let's do this together. The word launching means to set a boat in motion by pushing it into waters. Did you hear that? It is to set a boat in motion by pushing it into the waters. And I really believe today there is somebody that is boat of life has been parked by the shore for too long. <laughs> You've been parked by the shore for too long. And you are about to be launched into the waters. I didn't say that you will launch yourself into the waters. Because the word launching means to push. So the hand of God is available this morning to push somebody into your waters. In the name of Jesus. Did you hear that? It's a divine push. It is a divine. When God push you, he gives you advantage. When God push you, he gives you advantage. When God's hand push you, it gives you advantage. I've seen God's hand push me. Where you stand and sat with people, you know on paper, you don't measure. You know by experience, you don't measure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you do the mathematics and you calculate and put all together, you want to write yourself off. But yet there is a hand. I say yet there is a hand. There is a divine push that will give you advantage in your generation. There is a divine push that will give you advantage against your competitors. There is a divine push that will move you from where you are to where you are supposed to be. This morning in the name of Jesus Christ, we release the hand of God that will push us to launch us in our next step in Jesus name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Malando Karabaya. 
Number two, meaning of launch out. It means to put in motion to start a company or an enterprise. It means a motion, a movement sponsored by God. Mango do sadagaya. Did you catch what I just said? I'm feeling loaded this morning already on my, by myself alone. I'm okay. Are you hearing me? I say by myself alone, I am okay. Tell your neighbor, you didn't clap for me to get me here. So even if you criticize me, it won't kill me. If you had clapped for me to get me where I am, then your criticism could kill me. But because you didn't have a hand into what God has done for me, your criticism cannot kill me. Somebody say, I hear you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Keep talking. It's not your hand who push me here. Are you hearing me? Where you are today is not the hand of your neighbor who push you there. So let your neighbor talk and you rejoice. Because if they did not have plans for you to get you where you are today, their criticism cannot kill you. Hallelujah. Don't worry about people think. Don't try to be politically correct. Just be thankful that the hand, the divine hand of God is upon you. And today, it will launch you into an area you never thought you could ever go. You just watch this word coming. It's for you. You watch. Just sit down and relax. You will catch this. I'm preaching myself happy because this word is for me first. I tell God I open my wing. I want to be launched out somewhere. I want you to change my denomination. I want you to change my rank. Listen to me. In this Christian life, there are people who have rank but no grace. They speak from a place of position but no grace. There are other individuals who have grace but no rank. They are so talented but they go nowhere. Nobody listen to them. Are you hearing me? They have grace but no rank. And there are others, no grace, no rank. That means you need to work yourself up to grace and rank. And there is other people who have grace and tell your neighbor, this is me. No, no, please say it by faith. I know you don't believe it, but still say it. You don't believe it, but still say the thing. Say it's me. Rank and grace. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Oh, it doesn't matter. We are walking in rank and grace. I am tired to be rankless and no graceless. I am tired to be graceless and rankless. It is time we rise with grace and rank. I'm talking to somebody here today. God is about to launch you out. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Sponsored by God. The word launching me to introduce, to reveal, to make known. That's right. That's yes. right. God say revelation and introduction to your next. Putting an end to your rehearsal of the last. Okay, let me put it right. My English is becoming very special. <laughs> lately, I'm very proud of my English lately. Pastor Julef, am I doing okay? okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God said, I'm about to move you in your next by putting an end to the rehearsal of your last. Because see, <coughs> you've been pondering too much on the past. You've been rehearsed too much what people did against you. You've been rehearsed too much people fire you, people let you down, people betray you, people push you down, people take advantage. You've been rehearsed too much. But today in this launching hour, you are about to stop rehearsal of the past and be launched in the, in the, in the next, in the, in the, tell your neighbor I'm going to the next. You know there's a man, his name is Walt Disney. I haven't started my message yet. I need to read, look after. There's a man, his name is Walt Disney. Walt Disney, he was fired because the editor said he has no creativity or imagination. <laughs> he, 
was fired because they said, you have no creativity and no power of imagination. Once they fire him, the imagination awoke. Maranto kalamandeke le kataya. Listen to me. Are you ready? Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. They have to fire you. You understand? Because if they are not fire you, and the creativity awaken when you are still with them, they will take credit and you will still be working for them. So God has to let them fire you before the creativity awaken. So instead of being an employee who is having a gold watch for a reward, you become a, an employer. You become an owner. Somebody say, I hear you. Sometimes people have to reject you for the greatness to awaken in you. Am I speaking to somebody? Sometimes they have to look down on you before greatness awakens in you. Somebody, somebody is here. Sometimes they have to insult you, to downgrade you, to persecute you, to despise you before the greatness awakens within you. Where you are today, they don't know what is in you. But wait until God launches you. Something is about to wake up in you that you never know before. Somebody say, I hear you. Keep pushing me. Keep pushing me. Keep criticizing me. Keep pushing me down. Keep despising me. It's okay. If they didn't fire him, Walt Disney will not exist today. Don't cry when people look down on you. They are actually pregnant in you with seed of greatness. Marondo Kalabada. The world launching means to propel, to catapult Makataya, to hit a target like an arrow. I told you years ago, I love planes, especially warplane, warplane. Warplane, I love it, I love it. I, I wanted to be a pilot and an engineer in the aeronautic, in, in the Navy. I love it. It is those dreams that you know it was not for you, but you still like it. <laughs> No, you know, because there's a lot of people pursuing dreams that are not for them, it's for their neighbor. Yes. Just because they like it. Yes. You don't pursue a dream because you like it. Yes. I love it to be a Navy SEAL. Yeah. Taking out people from farm. <laughs> you understand? Swimming in the water. You know what is funny? I'm scared of water, yet I want to be a Navy SEAL. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I told you, on these big plane carriers, Huge. They will tie up this plane, F-18. Do you know the F-18 is Canadian made? Yes. Yes. They used to call the CF-18 Canadian Falcon. Yep. Yes. And the American bought it and make it their own. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. They tied up this thing like this. And this pilot, Jeff knows that. He is a, a, pal, is a mechanic a, a, with aeronautic. Put the gear on. And these two bulldozers in the back fire up. Bang! You can hear the noise. This plane is pushing as hard as it can go, but it can't go anywhere. Catapult. Yes. Tied it up. Something is holding it back. Hashando Robokata. And it's pushing all. Some of you here. You wonder, why am I not productive? I'm working so hard. I'm sweating so hard. I'm pushing so hard and nothing is happening. Watch it. There's a catapult holding you back. It's not to kill you. It's to release you. Yes. It's not to hold you back. Amen. It's to release you. Once they release this catapult, the plane will, will run three seconds, four seconds and take off. All the other planes on the ground, they will run minutes before taking off. Sometimes God holds you back for a reason. It's not because he changes plan towards you. It's not because you're not good enough. That's why sometimes you think that you're such a failure. You're not a failure. It's because God is holding you back for a better time for a release. Am I speaking to somebody? God is about to launch you out. The time of launching has come. The time to release the catapult has come. 
It may not be for all of you, but it's for some of you. But if you are catching what? If you are catching what I'm saying, I said you have been held back for too long. It is time for the catapult to release you so you can be launched out. Somebody said, this is me. Yeah, this is me. Yeah, in Jesus' name. You cannot spend all your life just being held back forever. There need to come a time where you need to be released. Thank you, Jesus. Let, let me read at least one verse so you know we're in the Bible. <laughs> Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 8. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that is towed by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats. Somebody say two boats. Everybody say two boats. You need to catch this. Say two boats. All right. Then he saw two boats standing by the lake. The two boats are in the same place, in the same position. And they both have the same ability to deliver. All right? They are in the same category. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing the net. Somebody say washing the net. Then he got in one of the boats. Somebody say one of the boats. Not the two boats. One of the boats. He didn't go in the both, two both. He went in one boat. That means he had to choose which boat to go in. Oh, I'm catching you somewhere. This preaching is too good. Are you catching this? Yes. I said there were two boats who could deliver the same thing, standing in the same place, in the same dimension, same denomination. Yet he couldn't get in two boats. He had to go in one boat, and therefore he had to choose between the two boats. Who could do the same thing for him, but he had to choose one. I'm here to tell you, your competition has come to an end. Your competition has come to an end. Because you are the chosen one. You are the chosen one. We can walk like if we don't have somebody. God has come to draw the line. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Samuel, Launch out. This is where the title comes from. Into the deep. And let down your net for a catch. Ah, this is good. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled. I like the English. Toil. That means I work really hard like a slave and I catch nothing. We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Neither the less. Say this word. In the new English, they don't use this word anymore. But for us who are not English speaking, we'll learn our English. Nevertheless, it sounds very powerful. It sounds very... <laughs> nevertheless. 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 Tell somebody your less is over. There will never be less for you again. Nevertheless, less is over. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At your word, I will let down my net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Ah, ah. Seriously. I need this type of miracle that break my capacity. Yes. <laughs> so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. There's something so deep here related to business. I won't tackle it today. You know, their partners... These people are not supposed to be fishing because them too, they are from the fishing, value, uh, fishing culture of the night. So they, what are they doing in the water? Nobody's supposed to be in the water at this time except the one Jesus told to come. Do you want to know why? One day I will tell you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Other boat to come to help them. And they came and filled both boats. Both. He chose one boat in the beginning. Marakataya. Then he end up with filling up two boats. Think about it. So that they begin to what will happen if there was no second boat? They begin to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down on the knees saying, depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. He was humbled. Let me trickle down here for you a few points. 
and we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Just few points. God chose one boat out of two. In this life, friends, let me tell you, when the hand of God is upon you, everything falls in line. And the psalmist said, the line has fallen for me in pleasant places. I really believe in this season where we are, lines will begin to fall for the people in pleasant places places. Meaning you will not have to fight and to beat somebody but it is just going to happen. Things will begin to turn around to your advantage. Somebody say turn around. Because God decided to choose you, it's your turn. Somebody said it's my turn. And because it's your turn, it's your turn around time. Hallelujah. I told you before, a few years ago I was with Amadou, my son. <laughs> In California at Walt Disney. And uh, he's busy. He cannot make a lineup. He has to be moving around. But he wants to get into this manage, into this machine thing. And so I, I hold him and we got in quickly. We were the first people. And I was so happy. And then one, two, three other people start lining up behind us. And it was so stirred up. I couldn't stand with him in the line because he wanted to walk back and forth. But yet you cannot, you know, they put bars like that. So he, he can't move, you want to walk. So I turned to this guy and said, listen, I need to walk my son, I'm coming back. And then I took him, we went for a walk a little bit, and then I came back. When I came back, <laughs> the place was packed out. I couldn't then get a chance to talk to the guy, hey, I'm the one who was in the front, you know. <laughs> so I just stood in the middle now. And this thing is dragging. I feel like Guys, hey, did Jesus not tell anybody here that I'm here? <laughs> and I'm not into this lineup thing. In a matter of three minutes, he becomes stirred up again. He, he wants to walk. So I walk out again. I felt I was getting tired. And I went to walk again. And, and then he went to go back. And when we came back, guess what? We're at the bottom now. It's over. Now the whole place is filled up. And in this place, you don't talk to somebody who will understand you. Because everybody's there for themselves. Leave it alone that your son has issue. They don't care. Yeah. I stood there and held him by the hand. And suddenly, two ladies show up on the scene. One lady in the back, one lady in the front. And everybody's looking at the lady in the front. And she, you know, they know how to make you happy in Walt Disney. And she says some few beautiful words to excite everybody. And he said, okay, are you guys all excited to get in this ride? This ride is this, no, 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 no. Everybody said, all the kids with their parents, yeah! I'm going, please, let's get this moving. Stop shouting, we are not in church. Let me get in this thing quickly. <laughs> are you hearing me? <laughs> and I'm trembling, I'm going, I really hope that everyone will be able to get in, including us, so I don't need to wait for the next turn. And suddenly she said, me so so behind you will lead you. Everybody turn around. I'm prophesying for you. You may be in the bottom, but there is a voice that is coming. Turn around. I said, turn around. I just went like that. The last shall be. And the first shall be. When the hand of the Lord is upon you, don't worry about your position. God can reverse it to your advantage. I prophesy today, wherever you are standing, the line has fallen for you in pleasant places. It's your turn. I say it's your turn. I just turned like that, whoop style. And I become the first in line and say, yeah, so you can enter. I just enter. I say, you guy, you took my place. Keep taking Keep taking my place. Keep taking my place. Keep pushing me. Keep pulling me. The people reject you. They don't know they're positioning you. They are positioning you. I, I'm talking to somebody today. Don't give up. You've been positioned. You are being positioned. I just turned with style and I was the first. Ha! Ah, Jesus. Number two, these people were washing the net. Listen, I could preach to you and say, don't wash your hand out of it. But that's not the word God is talking to you today. 
You know why they were washing the net? Because they still had hope that tonight we are going back. <laughs> they are preparing the net for the next catching opportunity. I want to speak to somebody here. Don't drop your net on the shore of disappointment and walk away. They were washing the net. Even though they had a bad night. They were still believing that the following night could be different. They still have hope. They are washing the net. Preparing for the next opportunity. Yes, Lord. How bad was last night? How bad was last year's? How bad was that marriage? How bad was that relationship? Yet you are washing your net. Somebody can still love me. I'm not giving up. I know it was a tough night. It went in a direction I never expected. It took me out of God. It knocked me out. I lost my senses. It was a long, tolling, difficult night. But guess what? I'm washing my net. There's one more night coming. There's one more opportunity ahead. I won't give up. I won't turn my back. Don't give up. Wash the net. For the night coming. But here's the prophecy. They were preparing the net for the next night. And Jesus show up and say, you don't need to wait till the next night. Uh Did you catch what I said? Are you catching this? No, no, no. Let me repeat it. (laughs) They are preparing the net for the night to come. At their surprise, Jesus said, you don't need to wait that long. Launch out. I am here to prophesy that what you thought could take years, months, God have come today because you didn't give up, because you didn't curse him, because you didn't let him down, because you did not sit and give up on everything, because you still worship him, because you still acknowledge him, because you still pray to him, because you still believe him. God said, you will not need to wait till the night come. I am about to do it quicker than you thought. Tell your neighbor it's going to be quicker. Tell him this time it's going to be quicker. Makola Mando Galaya. It will not drag any longer. You've been prepared for the night. But Jesus said, this time not only we're going to catch fish in the day, but I'm going to introduce you to your next level. I will reveal to you what you didn't know about yourself yet. You didn't know. You thought for all this year you can only fish in the night and catch few fish to take care of your family. Watch it. You haven't seen nothing yet. I'm about to introduce you. Listen to me. If Peter had a good night of catching fish, he would have been set away from his next elevation. Sometimes your struggle... Your setback, your failure, whatever you want to call it, is a blessing in disguise. Because if he has done well, Jesus could not have convinced him that you can fish in the day. Because he was from a culture of night fishing. Because his father Zebedee fish at night. His grandfather fish at night. His great-grandfather fish at night. He embraced the culture of his family. Not knowing God has chosen him in his family to introduce the lineage to another dimension of exercising fishing. So, God has to allow the failure 
the night before so that he can get his attention to launch out into an area where he'd never been before. He never fished a day. He never fished at daytime. He never. And I feel God is about to convert some people. I'm not saying born again. I'm saying convert you. You know, when you see God can take a person like Donald Trump and make him to be a president. No, no, seriously. In real time. Who never been to political science classes? Huh? Christian, instead of complaining about this man, take note that you too you don't need to wait for all the credential anymore. You don't need anymore to wait for all the credentials. God can shift you in becoming an expert in fishing in daytime. What your parents never done and you never done. You are about to enter in something you don't even think you have the capacity. Men will tell you, you know what, you don't have the training. Thank you, but God is launching me out. <laughs> This is a spiritual message. Spiritual people can understand this one. Do you understand? You don't need to have all the credentials. When God chose you, he chose you. When God want to raise you up, he raise you up. The Bible said he raised the king. He set them in places and he's the one also he put them down. Am I speaking to somebody? Malago Dagaya. Sometimes people think it's over. Yet we have not started yet. Are you hearing me? I read about this man. His story just blew me out of the water. Jim Thorpe. In the Olympic in 1912. He was an Indian American. Who represent the United States in the Olympics. 1912, Jim Thorpe. At night, they stole his shoes. When he was sleeping in the Olympics. Somebody took his shoes because he was an Aboriginal. They kind of wanted to give him a hard time and discriminate him. So they feel like, what the heck are you going to do on the field to, to run? So they took his shoes away and said, you will run bare feet just like Aboriginal do there in the bush. This man woke up looking for shoes. He didn't find his shoes. <laughs> Passing by, he found two, one pair of shoes, but it's not the same shoe. One is bigger size than the other. In fact, they are all right foot. Right footed. Two shoes the same, the same foot. The same right. He, he put extra socks so that his foot can fit in it. And he put the two right foot on the feet, left or right together. It didn't look very glorious. It didn't look very attractive. It looked like he's a monster because one foot looked like that and the other one looked like that. Am I speaking to somebody? And the guy show up on the running place. Everybody's screaming against him because they are surprised that he finds shoes. He walk out of that place with two gold medals. Watch me. I don't care what the devil stole from you. There is a race to run. It doesn't matter what the devil did against you, what people did against you, shoes or no shoes, clothes or no clothes. There is a running, there is a race to run, there is a journey, a destiny, there is a prophetic journey to achieve. I don't care what happened to you or what they did to you, it's your time. Amen. The guy show up on the field, he didn't look eloquent like everybody else, he didn't look glorious, but it's not about the outside, my friend. People can press you down and push you around, but when you manifest yourself, Maraga Dagaya. Two gold medals. What did they stole from you last night? Your marriage? Your business? Your money? What did you lose? What did you lose? That you're going to drop the net on the sea, walk away. For what? For what? Look at what they did against me, you know. It was so unfair. Cry. Really cry well. But you will be launched out crying. It's okay. Am I speaking to somebody? Sometimes. <laughs> ah. 
The story of giving of a man who was a farmer. And the harvest was amazing. And he was just harvesting. And he understood tomorrow is going to rain. And if it's rain, it's going to mess up the whole harvest. And he's working hard. And suddenly, there's a snake. It's called minute snake. Minute snake. Minute snake, it bites you and in one minute you're done. That's called the minute snake. And the minute snake bites this guy on his finger. He look at the harvest. He look at his finger. He put his finger, he took the machete that he has in his hand. Cut his finger, tied it up. Keep working. After. It's called, don't miss this. Inspiration give vision. But, sacrificial living, persistent, allows you to run it through. Amen. Don't think you're going to run and finish the, 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 the race smiling. Have you ever seen a guy who's finishing the race smiling? No. He's catching his breath. <laughs> but yet, oh, you know, things are too tough. If you're going to cut the finger, cut it. Amen. But keep going. Keep going. Yes. You're going to cry, cry. But keep going. Hallelujah. You're going to scream, scream. But keep going. I've come here to empower you. So you will begin to believe again. Amen. And not settle for the opinion of people. But no God is with you who can be against you. If God is for me, who can be against me? They stole your idea, so what? Get another idea. They stole your business, so what? Start a bigger one. Okay, I'm going to wrap this thing up and we're done, okay? It by so Bible says... Let us go into deep waters. Today I want to drag you in deep waters. Somebody say deep waters. Deep waters. Say it again. Deep waters. Say it again. Deep waters. deep waters. Not shallow waters. I think as believers, we've caught too many tilapias. <laughs> it's called Peter's fish. Peter's fish is a tilapia, all right? We caught too many fish in shallow waters. And our testimonies are shallow waters fish testimony. No, you didn't catch me. I'm still waiting for somebody God will raise up here to sign one million dollar check to pay up the mortgage. No, no, you didn't get it. Don't, don't just get excited and say amen because when that money comes, I'm going to chase you down by fire, by force. <laughs> Woo! Now we are talking about deep fish. <laughs> I love you. That's why I like to push you. Deep waters, deep prayers, deep intimate relationship, deep devotion, deep, not shallow. In the shallow, we discuss nonsense stuff. Oh, you sit in my seat, that shallow fishers. You didn't smile to me. Please, shallow. No, no. Oh, did you see the color of her hair? Shallow. Shallow. What shoe is Pastor Julef is wearing today? Shallow. Somebody say shallow. Shallow. What kind of dress are you wearing? Shallow. I don't like this person. Why? Shallow. When you still have time to look at people's hair. Is it Jamaican hair? Indian hair, Colombian hair, Mexican hair, Sudanese hair. Keep your hair. Leave it alone. 
the shallow. Oh, why is this woman always kneeling down to pray? Shallow. Why is this guy always loud? Shallow. Why is this one always quiet? Shallow. Why is this woman is just running back and forth? Shallow. Why is this woman is screaming? Shallow. At one cross point, let us go in the deep water. Hey! Church is full of shallow. Even our prayers, we, we infect the intercession team with shallow issues. <laughs> shallow visions. Oh, I see there is a problem here. Look at this leader. He's not smiling. Shallow, shallow. Really shallow. Too shallow. Uh, I saw, the, did you see the pigeon? There was a pigeon they didn't want to leave. There's this pigeon. What is the prophetic meaning now of this? <laughs> Come and talk to me, somebody. Can you talk to me? Okay, listen to me. When you see a pigeon here, don't try to go negative because this church is the church of God. So this pigeon, is a, we can say, is a type of the Holy Ghost. Don't go somewhere else. Even when you see... What is this bird that fed the prophet? The raven. the raven in French is corbeau. When you see a raven here, don't start to say it. demonic powers. <laughs> demonic powers. Oh, demonic power. Intercession. Did you guys saw? There was raven running around the building. Now they exaggerate. They were running around the building. They are in, in front of the door, especially by the office. Ah, we need to pray for apostle. Ja, 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 ja. There might be something happening. The raven. If you see a raven here, don't see a demonic. See a source of provision. I must begin to somebody. But I come today to move you from your shallow thinking. Shallow thinking. Shallow thinking just want to survive. If only I can have enough money to eat tomorrow. No, no, no. We're talking about kingdom thinking. Where you make so much money, you take care of all the problems of the world. No, thank you for giving an offering. Thank you. God bless you. Do you understand? You make so much money, you feel like, yeah! yes, yes. No, no, okay, let me put it this way. How many people here will say, you know, this guy's making too much money. I don't want to be his friend. <laughs> <laughs> the fact he's making too much money, I don't want to be close to him. No, 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 no. Shallow. That's where you need to understand. Listen to me. Are you ready? Yes, sir. No, no, no. You, you need to be careful here. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I know. We are called to take care of the poor. But the greatest seed you will plant is not in the poor. Yes. It's in the rich. Because it will take you to his dimension. Yes. So you can take better care of the poor. Yes. I'll come to provoke you from your shallow thinking. That is carnal, selfish, limited, small, tiny, puny. Let me just make it me and me alone shallow. You want to make it not for you. You want to make it so you can have an impact. That's why you want to make it. You don't make it for yourself. You make it for others. He has to call the other boat. Come and partner with me. I am so blessed I can't handle it. I need somebody to help me handle my blessing. Hey! For the longest time, we call people to come and help us in our poverty. Now imagine you're so loaded, you call people to come and help you handle your blessing. I'm speaking to somebody. You will call people to come and help you handle your blessing. Handle your increase. Handle the increase, the multiplication. 
I, I, I have too much. I, I cannot manage this thing on my own. Oh. I need somebody, you know, come, come, there is too much fish. So loaded, you need help. Not so poor, you need help. Not so problematic, you need help. No, you are so blessed, you need help. Tell somebody, I need help. Now, prophetically, hear what I'm going to speak to you. There are many in this house and listening to me. Every time you call people, they begin to check in their pocket because they know they need to come and bail you out. Do you understand? Because you call for help, but the time is coming Amen. where you will call them and say, and they go, oh, you know, and then you begin the stories. Life has been so tough lately. Ah, things are rough at home, financially speaking. You are counseling them. And then they said, I really want you to come. You've been so good to us. We have an envelope for you. No, no, you didn't get it. This morning it just happened to me in my office. I thought I was running to the house of this person to go bail them out. He said, no. You have bailed us out so many times. We want you to come to our house to give you an offering. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody? You will call for help, but not to be bailed out. But because you have been so blessed, you cannot manage your blessing. You need help to bless somebody. You need help to... Money coming, come to me, for the sake of a gospel, for the sake of a harvest. Oh, money coming, come to me. You see, it didn't say like that, money coming. No, no, no. That's shallow, shallow. This is shallow, money come. that's shallow. Deep waters, money come. Marakata ya rabadaga. Hey! Am I speaking to somebody? Shout yes! Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Not this. We are tired of shallow, selfish living. Yeah. For me and me and me. Yeah. We go to deep waters. Yeah. Just take it, take it, take it, take it. Give some more. Take, take, take. That's your story. That's your story. Yeah. Jessica, that is your story. It is your story. I am loving this too much. Yes. Ah. The net begin to break. Up to today, if fish in shallow water at night, net never broke. Because he lived survival. He had just enough to bail out his family. Until God said, you've done okay. But now let me introduce you to something you have not learned at school yet. Your parents have never done it. Your grandparents never done it. I'm going to introduce you to your next level. In this level, you don't experience survival miracles. You experience boat sinking, net breaking miracles. I said boat sinking, net breaking Miracle. Can you say that with me? Boat sinking, net breaking miracle. One more time. Boat sinking, net break. One more time and believe it. Boat sinking, net breaking miracle. Who is it that for? What is that this for? Hallelujah. Let it be so in Jesus' name. I'm closing. This is outstanding that Jesus messed him up. He caught so much fish. When he came out of the water, he fell down on his knees. He said, Jesus, he humbled himself. Watch this. Lack can humble you. Poverty can humble you. But there's another level of humility that poverty can do, lack can do, only blessing does. I say, Lord, humble me with blessings. 
<laughs> my wife sent me a picture of uh, a Nigerian lady. It was really amazing. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to try to paraphrase. She said, oh, Lord, test me and make me know who I really are by blessing me with one million. <laughs> Test my heart with some money. <laughs> she didn't pray. She didn't say, Lord, prepare my heart for one million. Say, no, no. Let me see who I really are by giving me one million. <laughs> <laughs> I am loving that. Just bless me. Let me see what is in me. Outstanding success. Success can be your mark of humility. There are some people who are so humble because they are so blessed. That's the blessing I'm talking about. You're loaded, but yet so simple. Amen. No arrogant trying to boss everybody around. No, 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 no. no. You're so loaded, you become humble. Because you know all your years, you fish at night you, and you live at night and you sleep at day and you fish at night and you sleep the day until through all your experience and expertise God now introduced you to something you never learned and the breakthrough becomes so powerful you can only be humble I want to remind somebody today no matter what you have you didn't have that 20 years ago God gave it to you Amen. it should humble you Amen. and my closing is this when God begins to walk with you in new dimension he said, you will still have the fishing skills and characteristics and expertise. But this time, I'm going to change what you're catching. Instead of catching fish, you'll do what? Man. Now, read well the scriptures. All this time, thank you. All this time, Peter tried. I want to release a prophetic word for you. Trial. But Jesus said, launch out, not for a trial, but for a what? A catch. A catch. Mm -hmm. Trial time is over. Amen. Your next move is a catch. Amen. Your next investment is a catch. Amen. Your next business is a catch. Amen. Your next relationship is a catch. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. The days of trials are over. I'm in this for a catch. Amen. Not for a trial. Amen. Thank you, Father. I say thank you, Father. Amen. One day, Jesus wanted to show Peter the equalizer. I'm not talking about the movie of Denzel Washington. I'm talking about the revelation of equalizing things in spirit. Jesus wanted that. And you know what Jesus did? Somebody come to Peter and say, Peter, your master. What the heck is wrong with you? He doesn't pay taxes. He does not. And Peter said, he went to the master. Said, master, these people are asking, you know, you don't pay taxes. What's going on? Jesus said, Peter, go back to the same river. But this time, don't miss this. This is it. Don't miss it. He said, this time, the first fish you catch, <laughs> open the mouth. Now, God launch him out. He moved from a shallow water catching survival fish converted in money he just make it day by day to a deep water in the place of boat sinking net breaking miracles is loaded now with a double portion of two boats right? Converted in money 
because he was a businessman. He just caught enough fish for one year of what he's been doing fishing at night day by day. In one catch, he covered one year trial. But he was laborious. Then we walk with Jesus. And Jesus said, now, <laughs> the reason I made you launch in the waters was not for the net breaking miracle. It's because I'm about to show you a new dimensions of wealth. He said, Peter, these taxes, all the fish you caught that day, that's how much money we need to pay to Caesar. Go back to the river. Peter's thinking, but master, I need two boats because we're going to have another catch like last time. He said, no, the first fish you catch, open the mouth. I want to prophesy for people in business. Listen to me. Don't miss this. Today, what you need is not many business opportunities. It's not many clients. It's one. Now, fish, Peter upgraded, was elevated and promoted to the higher dimension of fishing skills. Now, he doesn't need too much resources. Number one. Number two. He didn't need too man manpower. He didn't need too much work. He just needed to catch the first fish. And then he said to me, go home. What you need is the first fish. Amen. It's one client. Maracola Manticala. One big fish that will give you the equivalent of your net breaking miracles and 20,000 fishes. Just one. Tell your neighbor, all I need is one opportunity. Yeah, that's all you need. It's one opportunity from your workplace for your promotion. It's one opportunity from your boss. T.D. Jakes needed just one opportunity. He pastored a church of 60 to 300 people for many years. Yet he was anointed the same. He was powerful the same. But he was fishing in his own strength in the shore. All he needed was one opportunity. Years ago, on the anniversary of Azusa, honor Robert to honor the black man that God used to bring the revival in Azusa, decided I would like to have few black preachers. And they sent him the CDs and the tapes of the different speakers. Marco Lamatia. There was a team listening to the different tapes to see who is the anointed black man that we're going to use for this celebration. It's a team of people checking. But the final decision belonged to Oral Robert. Oral Robert was not a part of the team. It just happened that he went to the washroom and walked by the team. And TDJ tape was playing at that moment. It couldn't be early, it couldn't be later. And he went to the washroom, come back, still hearing. He's the one who has the final decision, but he's not the one listening. And he walked at the right moment and he said, Who's that guy? They say his name is TDJ. He said, I want him. That's who he is today. Because of one opportunity. He didn't need a sinking, net breaking miracle. That is the next step. But the final year, he just needed one fish. One fish. It's called watershed moment. Where you walk in the place at the right time, at the right moment. All you need is one watershed moment. It's just one fish. And everything is close for you. Stand up on your feet. Malakuta Kalamada. Have you been blessed today? Did somebody receive something in your spirit today? Did somebody receive something in your mind today? Is somebody feel expanded today? Hallelujah. Launch 
in, out. I come today to give you permission to fear not. <coughs> I come today to give you permission to fear not. I told you last week, you die, you die. At least you die doing something you believe in. I give you permission today, even your tears, don't settle at the beach. Don't settle under the coconut tree. Don't settle on the shore of bitterness. Don't settle on the shore of being rejected. Don't settle on the shore of being betrayed. There are still fish to catch. There are mountains to climb and rivers to cross. There are businesses to build, churches to build, families to build, ministries to release, projects to build. There's still life to live, nation to conquer, cities to take, neighborhood to impact. And it's not the angels that will do it. It's you. Today I give you permission and I forbid you to look down on yourself. I forbid you to keep wrestling the past and take a boldness by faith to move to the next. Somebody say the next. Say the next. Say it again the next. Everybody shout the next. Say the next. Not rehearsing the past. All things are passed away. It was unfair but it's passed away. It was a mistake but it's passed away. It is passed away. God won the next for you. That's where cross points stand. The next. We want the next for everybody sitting here under the sound of my voice. By apostolic authority, you will no longer remain on the shore. You are launching out in the deep because there's the next waiting for you. Your next has come today in the name of Jesus Christ. I say your next has come in Jesus' name. I will change it. I will say your next is here. I didn't say your ex. I say your next. Are you hearing me? I didn't say your ex. I say your next. I did not say your ex. I say your next. I didn't say your ex. I say your next. Your next is here. I want you to hold hand now, right now. I feel you, child. You need to prophesy open somebody. Begin to play something for me. Malando la katia la kataya. I want you to prophesy the next of somebody. If you are staying with your husband and wife, change position, please. I want you to change position. You need to prophesy the next of somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about you. Work it out, work it out for me, work it out. Begin to prophesy the next. Prophesy the next of the person you're holding on your left and your right. Prophesy the next. Prophesy the next. You will not stay where you are. You will not stay on the shore. You will not stay on the beach. You will not stay there. I am launching you out to the next. Embrace the next. Step in the next. Stand in the next. Handle the next. Receive the next. Walk in the next. Run in the next. You will not stand there. Release the next. Release the next. I am refusing to stay here. I am launching out to my next. I'm launching out to my next. I'm being catapulted to my next. I'm being put in motion to my next. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to change partner. Oh, you love somebody else. Move around and put somebody else. Bring it the next. 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 
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to look up to me now. I will speak the word you receive of amen. I want you to look at me now. Lift up your hand like that. You will not stay there. I want you to move prophetically forward. Launching out. Moving out. No more thing tightening you up. No real soul of the last or the past. But stepping up in the next. Malakolo managri hatoto. Mali koranda. It doesn't matter what have held you back. It doesn't matter what I've told you down. It doesn't matter how long it's been there. I come in the authority of the name of Jesus. I declare under this great commission, it's launching out time. It's launching out time. It's launching out time. It's launching out time. I bless you. And I release you. Oh, I see the hand of the Lord right now. The pushing hand of the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, I just see it. It is tender. It's not rough, but yet it's strong. The pushing hand of the Lord is pushing you out. My daughter, my son, the Lord say, I am pushing you out. Launch out in the deep. Move from the shallow. I am sponsoring this launch out. There again, there, there again, there, there again, there, there again, there. difficult it had been painful it had been it in some cases devastating but yet 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 is carrying you into the deep away from the crowd away from the murmurs away from the past away from the last but into the next into your next into your next place it will not be a trial it will be a catch i prophesy the catch i prophesy a catch no more trials now catch I feel such a rain and an anointing of the Lord coming upon you. Wiping your tears. Refreshing you. Strengthening your feeble knees. Such a beautiful anointing and presence of God. Ministering to your depths. Removing the worries. <laughs> removing you where you have lost trust. God say you may have lost trust but I trust you you may have lost trust but I trust you they, am, they may have not trust in you but I trust you you may have been shaken but I'm unshakable you may have been pushed out but I'm launching you out you may have been betrayed but I'm raising you up you may have been done trodden but I'm making you, I'm strengthening you, I am positioning you, I am introducing you, I believe in you. Launching out, launching out in family, launching out in business, launching out in projects, launching out in ministry, launching out with your finances, launching out in your relationship, launching out. The Lord said, you've been faithful waiting. Not because you are wasting, but you are waiting. The trial is over. 
the catch has come. The trial is gone. The catch has come. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give a clap offering to the Lord today. Hallelujah. I want you to stay where you are. I want the worship team to come quickly. I want to give, we give a clap offering to the Lord. And we celebrate God. We celebrate Him because we have been launched out. Don't go back. Don't flip back. Don't cry back. Look forward. Look forward. The launching is real. The plane has taken up. You don't belong in the shallow waters. There is a blessing in disguise. Wipe your tears, ma'am. Wipe your tears, woman. Wipe your tears, man. Wipe your tears, papa. There's a blessing in disguise. And your time has come. And God is turning things for you. Do you receive that today? Come on, give a clap offering to the Lord. We're going to sing together this song before we release you. acceleration 
thing that were seeming holding back and dragging will begin to move and rumble and take place he will order it it will move quicker I feel him removing mantles putting new mantles dressing you up lifting you up his hand is upon you suddenly you begin to believe that you can do it suddenly you begin to know that yet it's real it's possible what used to intimidate you can no longer intimidate you what used to frighten you can no longer frighten you what used to make you lose sleep can no longer rob you from your sleep because God is launching you out in the deep in the place of unshakable faith in the place of both sinking net breaking miracle is elevating you to the place of equalizing I give him thanks all things begin to be impossible your faith is rising up that child that you didn't believe that will be healed your faith is rising up that man that woman that you didn't think that they will be saved now your faith is rising up that business that you didn't think you could even dare to, to, to step forward to try to do something. Suddenly, it becomes accessible. It becomes feasible. Your faith is growing. Your faith is being enlarged. Your faith is being established. Your vision is enlarged. Your vision is being established. Suddenly, possibility becomes reality. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you. I bless your family. I bless your enterprises. I bless the seed that you have received today as it's growing in you. You are a new person. You are rising up to a new rank and to a new level of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God is changing your perspective and your perception. He is changing the lenses you've been wearing. You see yourself different. You are being sold as a cheap bargain. Now you recognize the true value of who you are. I bless you in the name of Jesus somebody say amen. amen I want you today you give a hug to 40 people 40 hug to 40 people in the church God bless you and we'll see you he will overcome by the blood of the Lamb.